Of all the paintings in existence, there are a few that stand out and are deemed by collectors to be extremely valuable and unique. So today, we're going to be taking a look at the top 15 most expensive paintings in the world. Number 15. Masterpiece It's not often that people are rewarded for being smug, but it's exactly what happened to artist Roy Lichtenstein with his aptly titled Masterpiece. Painted in 1962, it depicts a woman telling a man named Brad that his painting was a masterpiece that would get New York excited, and it cheekily predicts Lichtenstein's own fame. The piece was one of the first made in his innovative pop art style, which is a genre aimed to create art that was linked with popular culture while not being snobbishly highbrow. With this piece, the effect is achieved thanks to the use of classic Bende dots, a narrative content creating a very modern piece of artwork. It seems that art collectors agree, because in 2017 it was sold for an astounding $165 million, which is equivalent to about $197 million today. Best of all, the entirety of the proceeds were used to found Art for Justice, which is a fund that seeks to bring out criminal justice reform. Number 14. Woman 3 For some reason, male artists have often fixated on women as the subjects of their art. However, while the artists of Renaissance have consistently depicted them in realistic ways, Woman 3 is far more abstract than most. Painted by Dutch-American artist Willem de Kooning between 1951 and 1953, it depicts a woman using both dark and light brush strokes that create an abstract figure that's both unsettling and unrecognizable. While it spent much of its life at the Tehran Museum of Contemporary Art, in 1994 it was quietly purchased by David Geffen due to it being deemed as overly obscene by the Iranian government. And when it was made known that the piece was for sale in November of 2006, it was purchased by Stephen A. Cohen for an incredible sum of $137.5 million. Given that this is the 2022 equivalent of $199 million, this was an absolutely mind-boggling price tag. Number 13. Number 5. 1948. Number 5, 1948 may be difficult to put a finger on. That's because it was made this way by design. As the title suggests, it was painted in 1948 and expresses a form of abstract expressionism that uses various dribbles of paint. Known as drip painting, it is a radical technique where paint's dripped or poured onto a canvas in a fashion that, in many ways, can often appear to be quite random. Although the reality is that many of the brush strokes and designs are actually quite deliberate. Jackson Pollock began the practice in 1947 and in 1948 came up with this incredible piece of art, which was promptly sold in 1949 to a certain Alfonso A. Osorio. However, the painting got damaged and was subsequently reworked by Pollock, and over the years it's changed hands several times. Despite this chaos, the painting has nonetheless grew in value, and on November 2nd of 2006, it was sold to Mexican investor David Martinez Guzman for $140 million, which, when adjusted for inflation, comes out to $203 million. Number 12. New Couché Nudity has fascinated artists for centuries, and Amedeo Modigliani's 1907 painting New Couché is a pretty obvious example of this fascination in action. Known in English as the Red Nude or Reclining Nude, it was quite controversial for its time. After all, when it was exhibited in Paris, the public reaction against it was so strong that the police forced the museum to close down the show. And while the painting got very little positive attention during its lifetime, since then it's been condemned for combining the geometries of the 19th century with post-Cubism. And it was perhaps because of this that in 2015, Chinese businessman Lu Gi Khan purchased the painting for $170.4 million, which when adjusted for inflation comes out to $210 million. Beyond the price, what was crazy about this purchase is that it was allegedly made using his American Express card, and in an interview with the New York Times, he and his wife said that they would use the points from the purchase to travel first class for the rest of their lives. Number 11. Shot Sage Blue Marilyn Marilyn Monroe is easily one of the most famous actresses in American history, and so it makes sense that Andy Warhol, an artist and producer with a keen interest in Hollywood, decided to paint her. 
Now, the shot Sage Blue Marilyn in question is part of a collection of four so-called shot Marilyns, with each being an identical depiction of the famed actress set apart by varying uses of color in each one. Now, the reason why they're called shot Marilyns is because one of Warhol's friends actually shot at the paintings with a revolver, and so when combined with their artistic merit, they're worth a pretty penny. While the shot Sage Blue Marilyn was originally purchased by pop art collector Leon Crosher, it frequently changed hands over the years until on May 9th of 2022 it was put up for auction at Christie's in New York. It was here that it was sold for an incredible $195 million to American art dealer Larry Gagosian, making it one expensive beauty. Number 10. The Standard Bearer Rembrandt is easily one of the most prolific painters of all time, and of all his works, the Standard Bearer is amongst the most expensive out there. It is essentially a three-quarter length self-portrait, with its fine details such as the textures of the cloth and feather and use of realistic lighting makes it a unique piece. Now, While the painting is Dutch, for years it was in the hands of the Paris collection of Elie de Rothschild in France, and in 2019 the French government deemed it to be a national treasure. This meant that it was not allowed to be exported for a period of 30 months, and it was during this time that the Louvre attempted to pay for this painting so that it would remain in French hands. However, they were unable to conjure up the funds to satisfy the Rothschild, so in December of 2021 the Dutch state announced its intention to buy the work for its national collection. In January of 2022 it was finally purchased with the help of the Rembrandt Association and the Rijksmuseum Fund for a sum of $198 million, with the plan being for it to be put on show in each of the 12 Dutch provinces through a unique partnership between 12 museums, with this finally culminating in the painting being permanently placed at the museum in Amsterdam. However, despite its popularity, it should be noted that the painting was considered to be somewhat controversial due to the fact that the Rothschilds avoided taxes by funneling the proceeds through a system of tax havens. Yet, despite these concerns, the purchase of the Standard Bearer was ultimately approved by the Dutch government. Number 9. Les Femmes d'Alger, version O. Pablo Picasso is easily one of the world's most well known modern artists, yet, even he was inspired by the greats before him. You see, when he created La Femme d'Alger, version O, along with 14 other paintings, he modeled them off Eugene Delacroix's 1834 painting, The Women of Algiers and Their Apartment which is an erotic and for the time oriental painting depicting Algerian concubines in their harem, with a hookah used to smoke hashish or opium. Now, The Delacroix version received very positive critical acclaim and was purchased by King Louis-Philippe of France, leading to it being placed in the Louvre. It was here that Picasso first laid eyes on the painting, and between 1954 and 1955 decided to paint a version of his own made with heavy references to cubism, fractured and flat perspectives, and the violent color clashes. The painting is a very unique take on the original, and it was soon purchased by Victor and Sally Gantz. It was then sold to a private collector in 1997 for a price of $31.9 million, and while this is high in and of itself, it was then put up for auction again in May of 2015 where it sold for an astounding $179.4 million to Qatari Prime Minister Hamad bin Jassim bin Jabir Al Thani. Given that when adjusted for inflation this is equivalent to $221 million today, it was a stellar return on investment. Number 8. The Pendant Portraits of Martin Sulmans and Opjen Kopit Pendant portraits are essentially two individual paintings that are meant to be displayed as a pair. And when it comes to this type of art form, the pendant portraits of Dutch nobles Martin Sulmans and Opjen Kopit are a league above the rest. Painted by famed master Rembrandt in 1634, it depicts the groom Martin and the bride Opjen on their wedding day, and they're considered to be very rare due to the fact that they are to date the only known full-length pendant portraits painted by the artist. Additionally, the lighting, color mixing, and realism of the subjects makes them both S-tier paintings and so it makes sense that for a period of about 250 years the pair were owned by their heirs. However, in 1877 they were sold to the extremely wealthy French banker Gustave Samuel de Rothschild. Rothschild elected to keep them on his own private property, but in 2015 the Louvre Museum in Paris and the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam pulled their funds in an impressive display of cash to purchase the paintings for their displays to the tune of $180 million. 
which when adjusted for inflation comes out to about $220 million. Given that most of the paintings on this list are owned by private owners who don't show them on public displays, this was certainly a great purchase for the art community as a whole. Number 7. Number 6. Violet, Green, and Red By many accounts, Number 6, Violet, Green, and Red, which was painted by Latvian-American abstract artist Mark Rothko in 1951, isn't much of anything. Consisting of large expanses of violet and green set atop a red background, his paintings look pretty dull online. However, even his organization's website says they're really only meant to be seen in person. This is because they're part of his famous Color Field collection, which was Rothko's signature approach in which he would rotate his palette across a wide number of variations, trying fewer and greater numbers of individual regions. The idea was that this would immerse the viewer into his color, as the huge, tall, and wide canvases would ensure that the viewer's focus would be entirely covered by the boundaries of the work, which, of course, is an impossible feat to accomplish on a computer screen and as such it was highly prized by art critics who get to see it in person. And it was with this in mind that it was purchased by Russian billionaire Dmitry Rybovlev in 2014 for $186 million, which when adjusted for inflation is an astounding $230 million. However, its high purchase price eventually sparked a protracted legal battle between the art dealer and Dmitry, and to date the entire story as to who is to blame is still being ironed out in court. Number 6. Vasha Schlangen II. While Vasha Schlangen translates to water serpents in English, the reality is that this painting has little to do with the animal kingdom and far more to do with eroticism. Created by renowned artist Gustav Klimt between 1904 and either 1906 or 1907, it was originally commissioned and bought by Jenny Steiner, who was the daughter of a Viennese silk factory owner. Essentially, a group of four water nymphs in lustful bliss, there are varying interpretations of this depicting the mythical creatures. However, one of the leading views is that it depicts lesbian intercourse, with mythical creatures being used as to not be overly controversial. However, it was perhaps partially because of what it depicted that it was confiscated by the Nazis during the Second World War, and after falling into the hands of Klimt's supposed illegitimate son, it was eventually sold to the art broker Yves Bouvier for $112 million in a settlement that split the profits both ways. Yet it didn't take long for Bouvier to turn around and sell it for even more, as in 2013 he was involved in a scandal in which he sold it to Russian billionaire Dmitry Rybovlovlev. I say scandal because it was alleged that Bouvier essentially tricked the billionaire into believing that it was worth far more than it was by using deceptive statements, as once the dust settled he sold it to him for a total of $187.5 million, which comes out today to about $235 million. However, Bouvier was later vindicated in court and has since launched a countersuit that's currently underway. In any case, Vasher Schlangen II is no longer owned by either of them, as it's believed that the Russians sold it to an unnamed Qatari princess for a price of around $170 million back in 2017. So, I think it's somewhat fitting that this controversial painting has had a knack for staying controversial. Number 5. Number 17A When it comes to abstract art, Jackson Pollock is a household name, and while he's created several high-profile paintings, in 1948, he created a true beauty when he painted his now famous number 17A. While its not too creative name makes it difficult to determine what it's trying to depict, it's nonetheless quite valuable. After all, beyond its historical significance for being one of the very first drip paintings, it's received critical acclaim for its complex color vortex, with the top and bottom layers being nearly impossible to differentiate while smudges of yellow, blue, and black on the flipper board, while smudges of yellow, blue, and black on the fiber board help soften the image. Now, this incredible piece of art was owned by a certain Kenneth C. Griffin for years, but in 2015 he sold it to the David Geffen Foundation for an astounding $200 million, which is equivalent to about $247 million today. So I guess it is fitting that it's such a crazy painting sold for such a crazy price. Number 4. Nafea Fa Ipoipo Paul Gauguin was certainly an interesting guy. After all, he made the unique decision to travel to Tahiti in 1891, where he thought he would find a vibrant indigenous culture that would allow him to escape the pretentiousness of European life. 
However, what he found instead was an island that had been thoroughly colonized by the French, with many of the people having been wiped out by European diseases and much of the culture having been misplaced due to heavy French influence. Despite this, he was still very productive while in the area, and he created more than 70 paintings while in Tahiti. One of his most famous to date has been Nafea Fa Ipoipo. Translating to When Will You Marry? In English, the 1892 painting depicts one woman in traditional clothing and another in westernized clothing, showcasing the sharp cultural contrast that existed on the island. However, what sets the traditionally clothed woman apart from the other is that she has a flower in her hair, indicating that she's ready for marriage, although her apprehensive glance and approach of the unidentified intruders in the background suggest that this may not be the case. Despite this, the two figures blend into the colorful landscape in a way that creates a series of conflicting emotions in the viewer, and it is perhaps this tension that's made the painting a standout. Yet while this painting may be a masterpiece, it was not viewed very favorably by people at the time. However, in 1917, it was purchased by Stachelen, and for decades it was on display at the Kunstmuseum in Basel, Switzerland. However, in 2014, it was sold to the Qatari royal family in a private sale for a price of $210 million, or $260 million when adjusted for inflation. When asked about his motivation, seller Rudolf Stachelen reported that, quote, the real reason is why only now? It's mainly because we got a good offer. The market is very high and who knows what it will be in 10 years. I always tried to keep as much together as I could. Over 90% of our assets are paintings hanging for free in the museum, end quote. In any case, this sale was easily one of the most incredible sales in recent memory. Number 3. The Card Players Playing cards is a pretty ordinary pastime, yet despite its simplicity, it was this everyday act that Paul Cezanne attempted to encapsulate when he created a five-painting series surrounding card playing. While the exact dates of the paintings are uncertain, what is clear is that they were all painted sometime between 1890 and 1895 and today they've received extensive critical acclaim. After all, Cezanne inspired cubism and presaged abstract art, and it's exactly this series that features in a large percentage of art history courses. Additionally, four or five of the artworks are in very high-end institutions, with these being the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Musée des Orsay, the Courtauld, and the Barnes Foundation. So when the fifth painting was put up for sale by Greek shipping magnate George Embiracos in 2011, art collectors snapped at the chance. While the Cezanne in question was a relatively simple picture of two peasant farmers playing cards, it nonetheless received two bids at around the $220 million mark. But upon seeing this, the Qatari royal family quickly outbid them by paying a price of $250 million, which in all likelihood may have actually been closer to $300 million after accounting for currency exchange rates. And when adjusted for inflation, the price was somewhere between $325 and $390 million, although the exact fee is uncertain to this very day. Number 2. Interchange While interchange may not look like much, it's in fact a seminal piece of art that's a true mark of the abstract expressionism movement. Created by Willem de Kooning in 1955, the painting was inspired by the busy intersections of New York City, with its quickly made and colorful gestural marks surrounding the abstract figure of a seated woman. At the time it was made, it was seen as a cool, yet not especially remarkable painting, and so in 1955 it was sold by the artist for $4,000 to famous architect Edgar Kaufman Jr. Over the next few decades, it changed hands a few times, and it was over this time period that the painting began to soar in value. You see, ever since this painting was created, de Kooning had gained a reputation for being one of the great maestros of American-based abstract expressionism movement akin to how Michael Jordan is the poster child of basketball and how Wayne Gretzky is the poster child of hockey. When you further consider factors such as changing hands and the passage of time increase the value, it starts to become clear why, in 2015, it sold at auction for $300 million to hedge fund manager and billionaire Kenneth C. Griffin, which, when adjusted for inflation, is an astounding $370 million. To this day, this stands as the highest price ever paid for an abstract painting, making Interchange a real treasure. Number 1. Leonardo da Vinci's Salvatore Mundi The undisputed king of rare paintings is Leonardo da Vinci's Salvatore Mundi. That's because to date, it takes the cake by a large margin for being the most expensive painting ever sold. 
painted by Maestro Leonardo da Vinci sometime between 1499 and 1510. There are about 30 copies of the Salvatore Mundi out there that were made by da Vinci's followers and students. However, for a period of about 400 years, it was widely believed that the original had been destroyed in 1603. Yet in 2011, it was revealed that one of the copies was in fact the real deal. How did they know this? Well, it turns out that there were several features on the painting that were used almost exclusively by da Vinci himself and would be extremely hard to replicate. For example, da Vinci achieved a masterful sfumato effect on the face by applying the paint with the heel of his hand, although other effects such as the ability to make the painting have super realistic hands and creating intricate knotwork on the clothing were all done in da Vinci's signature style. Thus, while it may be possible that some painters in his studio assisted in the painting, the majority of it was likely done by da Vinci himself. This was an incredible discovery, given the fact that the painting had spent most of its life unnoticed in storage, and even when it was put up for auction, had never been sold for more than a few thousand dollars. In any case, the Salvador Mundi was once again put up for auction at Christie's New York in November of 2017, and when the dust settled, it was sold for $450.3 million, or an inflation-adjusted price of $537 million, to Saudi Arabian Prince Badir bin Abdullah who bought it on behalf of Abu Dhabi's Department of Culture and Tourism for display at the Louvre Abu Dhabi. However, to this day, the painting has never made it to this public viewing gallery, as after spending time on both Prince bin Salman's private yacht and in a Geneva storage locker, it was hidden somewhere within the borders of Saudi Arabia. Thank you to our channel members. 